Making a round knife sheath is just like starting any other knife sheath. You start off by taking the knife and tracing it onto a piece of paper, or in this case, a piece of cardstock. And then I add about a half inch around the edge of it where it's going to be stitched. And I'll be making a spacer piece that goes in there. And on this particular style, I'm actually adding a spacer up on top of one side of the blade. So the knife will actually be held in only on one side by a, um, a snap on a loop. On the other side, it'll be held in by the actual sheath that's going to be stitched shut there. And since this knife has a, a large bolster on it, on the blade, I'm actually making a little cutout into the sheath for that to fit into. So you always want this to uh, stick up just enough along that edge that if the knife moves a little bit inside the sheath, a point doesn't poke out and become a hazard. And then I'm adding on the, uh, the tab that I was talking about that's going to have a snap closure on it. And a little bit of going around and deciding how I'm going to change it, parts I don't quite like. You always, again, make all your mistakes on paper and then you don't spend money on leather that you're just throwing into the scrap bin. This will be the back part of the sheath. Uh, the front part will be the same thing, only reversed. So you basically flip the piece of paper over and then you cut off the tab so that you don't have it on there. And then you can use the same piece to make um, a piece that'll be your spacer. In this case, I'm just going to uh, use the scratch all and poke holes through the pattern so that I can uh, mark it onto the leather whenever I want to make the spacer. Make sure you get everything flipped around the right way so that your pieces are not, uh, you know, both set up to be the back piece. And I'll just rough cut these out for now. And then I'm going to, like I said, mark the piece that's going to be the spacer. I'll mark around the edge, all the way wherever it's going to be. And then I'll poke holes through along that line that's right along where the edge of the blade is going to be. Some knives you can get away with cutting a straight piece and uh, wetting it down and shaping it to the edge. So you can just cut a piece that's a half inch wide strip. But this has a pretty drastic curve and then it's got that right angle turn up at the top. So I might have to cut it to shape for the knife sheath. And like always, I punch holes wherever I'm going to have a tight corner. Rather than try to turn a, a real tight corner, I just go ahead and punch it out and then cut away from each uh, from the punch in each direction. Okay, and that would be my spacer piece. Round off some corners. And that's how all that's going to go together. Now, since I don't have a sheath for the knife yet, you'll notice I'm just sticking it into... I've got two pieces of cardboard taped together to make a makeshift cover for it, which is actually how I've always had round knives shipped Whenever I was uh, working at a leather store, that's how they came in. 
apparently manufacturers think that it's a waste of time to go ahead and make a sheath for a knife and give it to a leather worker who's just going to make a sheath for it. Now I'm basically marking the holes where the snap's going to go so I can get that punched and ready to go before I lay out my pattern so I know where everything's going to be. I don't want to have uh, come back later and punch through something that I put on there to decorative. I'd rather work around it to start with. And then we're going to do some stitching grooves. So that when we're finally finished with putting it all together, the stitches will be set down into the leather. Makes everything last a lot longer. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and stamp something on it because even though this is just for my own use and just really going to be laying around the shop, that's no reason not to go ahead and at least stamp a good border on it. And in this case, I'm using a small meander pattern for a border. It's one of my favorite patterns to do. The trick on it is always to, to do the corners first and work towards the middle of a section. And then at the last probably three or four impressions, you basically figure out what the center of that will be and make them all as even as possible right there. Show a close up of it here. So for the last three impressions, I'm going to go halfway between those two that I've already got. And then between you can kind of stretch and shape everything a little bit. And then I'm going to bevel and mat the center. Um, You gotta be a little careful with this not to squish your uh, meander pattern that you've got going around the edge. And this is the matting tool I'm using. It's kind of a pebble grain sort of, I don't know if it's got a particular name or not. Once it's all stamped up, I'm going to go ahead and dye it. I'm using the same light brown oil dye that I used on the handle for the knife. It's going to come out a little bit different color on the leather than it did on the wood. Not quite as dark. And I put a coat of Resoline on for finish. And I decided I'm going to line this piece. Any knife sheet that I make for other people, I line them. So I should probably do the same thing for myself. So I'm using some contact cement here to glue the uh, pieces into the liner. I'm making sure I get my snap in there before I glue it down. That's an often forgot detail. Now on the tab that uh, the closure snap goes on, that one you need to punch through the lining as well. So we're just going to go ahead and glue it down, put the snap in later. But we don't want that snap inside the sheath uh, to be coming through the leather. So we don't scratch up our blade. 
The snap is softer than the steel of the blade, but it will leave a mark on it eventually. Right, then anytime you line a piece, you have to sew around any openings that are going to be in it before you can get to the part where you actually sew it all shut. So that's what I'm doing here. And I found that it seems to work a little better to sew it before you trim your pieces. The sewing machine can sometimes get pieces to stretch a little bit as the needle's pushing through. So if you cut it ahead of time, your pieces may not quite fit the same after you've gone and sewn them. I've noticed it more on long lines of stitching like belts than on small stuff like this knife sheath, but it's still kind of a habit that I've gotten into. Then once we've got it all trimmed, we're going to go around with some more contact cement. We're going to glue up all the pieces, put it all together basically with glue before we go down and put the final stitching in that's that seam that goes all the way around. And here's where I'm going to go ahead and put that snap into that um, tab we have to be the closure. And then it's down to the machine again for some stitching. said before there's going to be that piece that actually is stitched shut that'll hold the knife in stitching through all three layers front back and the spacer and your spacer needs to be about the thickness of whatever your blade is i didn't mention that earlier but it is a somewhat important detail if you make your spacer too thick the blade wobbles around if you make it too thin then it um, kind of sticks in the blade might be able to find a way to get to the stitches rather than bump into the spacer all the time. Then it's to the grinder to even up the edges. It's just a little cheap 1x30 belt sander. And since you sand the edges, you gotta go back and do your edge beveling. If you've done it already, you kinda gotta usually touch it up and do it again. But then we're going to use some dye on the edges and then some gum trag, to, some gum burnisher to um, finish up those edges. And once that's kind of settled in a little bit, you go back and burnish it with the, uh, in this case, a wooden slicker till you get a nice smooth finish on your edge. And of course, always important, make sure that whatever you're putting in it is going to fit. And this style of sheath, the knife sort of catches on one side and then rolls in.
So I've got a finished leather knife, uh, brown knife sheath now.